Hey, thanks for tuning in. This is Ari Koenuma and welcome back to my channel. In today's episode of Why This Song is Impactful, I'd like to look at Led Zeppelin's Immigrant Song and figure out how this song became so impactful. And by impactful, what I mean is when a song becomes uh, so meaningful to us because it just, you know, in this song's case, it just blows us away, really. Um, I've been interested in like figuring out the secrets to how to create music like that. And so when I'm looking at other people's songs, I'm looking at it from that perspective. So uh, this is probably the most uh, ferocious, aggressive, heaviest track of the Zeppelins. And at, it's relatively short, and but there's just punchiness in that uh, simplicity. So I was uh, looking at this song from the perspective of, okay, so you know, how do you just, you know, just blow people away with this you know sort of a ferocious little gem here and I came up with uh, four different observations why uh, this song is so strong so uh, we'll look at them in the order of their appearance in the song. So the first two actually appears right in the first you know few seconds of the song and I think this one might be one of the greatest intros or opening of all time as far as rock songs are concerned. Just listen to that um, riff right? Uh, that riff is a great proof that the sort of the hook lies in the rhythm, and it's not the notes, it's not the chords. When you have a distinct rhythm, right? Just imagine, you know, if, instead of me not even playing the guitar, right? If I sort of clap the rhythm here, All right, I can't clap that well in time, but um, I mean, you can recognize that it's, it's the song. I mean, it's just so distinct. And when the rhythm is so distinct, you don't need stinking chords and you know, you know, many notes to, to make that happen. It's just, just straight up on F sharp. And you just uh, uh, make that uh, riff, that rhythmic motif be known. And then it, boom, it just kind of hits people like a 10 ton hammer uh, on the head. Uh, it's just a great study in how important rhythm is to music, and in particular for rock music. Okay, so coming on the heels of that ferocious opening riff uh, is this uh, Robert Plant's iconic shriek, which is um, goes from C sharp to C sharp, and then goes half step down, and then back up to C sharp. Maybe I'll do that. Okay, so the thing about those particular notes, first of all, there's a big jump at the beginning, isn't there? Uh, an octave is, you know, it's probably just about a, the biggest kind of jump there is, although it's certainly possible to have more than an octave jump. It's just, it is hard vocally to have that big of a jump. Uh, but the thing about big intervals in a melody is that the bigger the interval is, the more dramatic and more attention grabbing it is. And uh, there are, you know, a number of uh, other courses that I observed where they incorporate that uh, factor really well. Um, it's really easy from a songwriting perspective to just have melodies that kind of go stay static. And then actually in the rest of this song, Robert Plant's melody is not that strong. It's not super melodic. Um, it's just more in the shouting range. But this opening riff is that... Uh, I should not try to imitate that. Uh, uh, you know, that, that jump. Right? Um, it's just, uh, just a great attention-grabbing device. And uh, man, um, that's just uh, a great technique to open with. I, I'm thinking next song I, I write, I might incorporate something like that in the beginning. Um, the other thing I would say about that line is uh, that any time you have a vocal line without words, you know, whether it's hey hey or na na or la la or whatever, that also tends to be very catchy. Uh, so uh, this one is just ahs in this case, but uh, you know, for some reason I think this is even more iconic for the fact that it's just ahs instead of words. Uh, there's just something primal about hearing voice just create sound and not words um, that really sort of seems to stick to us.
All right, so the third point I want to make is this gets a little bit in the area of arranging, but in the chorus part, right? The chorus part harmonically is fairly simple. Uh, Jimmy Page is going A, to B, C, right? And then uh, Robert Plant is just screaming on top of that, uh, but it's fairly static line. But uh, here is where the John Paul Jones makes his mark and then the, it's the bass who has the busiest part in this particular section. And I'll try to play it on the guitar. Uh, I can't even play this thing. It's so fast. I'm gonna practice this one. That's a really good good warm up exercise. It's just straight uh, scale. Uh, it's it's actually a that's a Mixolydian scale, uh, and then going uh, uh, and then it goes to major scale. Well, but anyway, the scales and modes don't matter. The point is that the bass has the busiest part, and that that is what is sort of keeping the tension or the drive in this section. Uh, going when the guitar lays back, the vocals are just kind of staying static, you know, even though if it's high and you know the, the drums are fairly steady, right? Um, usually the bass players don't really make statements like that, they just are holding down the bottom and just sort of synchronizing with the kick drum or whatever and um, I don't imagine, I don't know for sure, that Jimmy Page looks at John Paul Jordan and says, hey, you play this busy part. Um, I, I imagine that it's probably John Paul Jones who kind of looked at the part and go, oh, you know, what's going on doesn't really uh, keep things as interesting as I like it to be. I'm just going to play this, uh, you know, ferocious busy part to, to sort of fill up the space. Um, music is about fitting the space or or you want to feel the space the right amount so that it keep, keeps the audience's attention where it wants to be and um, makes the music interesting. If it's too busy, obviously, it, uh, you overwhelm the listener and you don't know what, where to focus. If it's too sparse, it can sound boring, right? And so I imagine that if they had recorded this with fairly straight bass line that part, the chorus would have felt more... I mean, it's still a good chorus, don't get me wrong, uh, but the chorus would have felt a little bit more run-on-the-mill, you know, nothing to write home about kind of thing. But it's that bass line that is just... Oof, just just keeps the motor running on the, of the song underneath. And... It's the band's sensibility to say, no, that is not good enough. I am going to fill up this space with this busy and interesting part to make it, you know, to, 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 to lift it up a level, right? I think that really definitely contributes to how impactful this song is. All right, the final point I make about this song is this, the dissonant chord that Jimmy Page puts in towards the end of the song, right? So he's playing the same riff. <laughs> Right, and then uh, this chord, which is, I, I think it's a, a C7, um, he puts it in like as a sort of accent and then it just keeps getting more and more often and it just builds the tension, right? Uh, that Again, that, that sort of a, a build up is the trademark of Jimmy Pages. You know, he knows how to sort of make the song move and uh, shift and so that is sort of what keeps the momentum going and, and keeps the tension high all the way to the end. You know, even though the vocals are kind of winding down, Robert Plant is just sort of crooning on top and, and you can tell that the song is ending. And then, but then the, the, what keeps the momentum going is the fact that this chord comes in out of the blue as a new element and then it just keeps getting more and more often. And it's a, it's a really good move. Alright, so we looked at four different uh, distinct songwriting and arranging elements that really made this song an impactful song. And while Led Zeppelin is made up of four really distinct and strong personalities, and you can throw them any regular old song and they'll make it sound great, amazing even, but to have that composition and arranging chops on top of that is what really brought, you know, sort of 
Led Zeppelin totally over the edge and that's why they have such an enduring timeless appeal in my opinion so these are the things that uh, we musicians can you know take to heart when we're creating our own music and for music fans it's just some things to notice and enjoy and appreciate why this music is so powerful after all these years okay alright that's all I have for you today thanks again for watching I'll see you next time